Good evening, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. Down in the orchard, giving my chickens a snack. And just sitting here watching them interact. They're feeding on kitchen scraps um, and a little treat of lettuce. And I was thinking while I was sitting here about how intensely social chickens are. And it got thinking got me thinking about the permaculture concept of social permaculture. It's been on my mind a little bit lately and it has just come to the forefront sitting down here watching these girls. So what is social permaculture? Social permaculture is taking the principles of permaculture and applying them to human relationships, to communities, to local economies, and the way we structure human society and human social norms. And I've been thinking about some of the ways that social permaculture is maybe a little bit undervalued. there's a good book by uh, Luby McNamara, and I'll put a link in the, in the description, which is kind of the preeminent book on um, getting people started thinking about social permaculture, people in permaculture. So when we talk about the permaculture principles and permaculture design, we are usually talking about taking those principles and applying them to agricultural systems and applying them to the interaction between people and the natural world to regenerate um, devastated ecosystems and to feed people. Social permaculture is much more focused on taking those same 12 principles and applying them to how people relate to each other instead of um, interactions with the natural world. So when we think of I'm going to stand up and walk around here for a little bit. As we think of permaculture, we think of whole system design. And you can't really ignore the whole segment of person-to-person interrelationships and have a whole integrated system. So I think in some circles, social permaculture gets kind of devalued or overlooked because the business of growing food is real serious business and the business of designing sustainable ways of living is real serious business and I think that and I think that it can be easy to kind of get a a really um, strong work ethic and a strong engineering design ethic and set aside the sociological aspect and the interconnectedness aspect. But if we're looking at designing for synergy and maximum efficiency and maximum productivity and maximum benefit to both people and the environment, we can't discount discount the social permaculture. So um, these are my Concord grapes here. They're going to be ripe soon. They're getting there. So in a Facebook group recently, someone, I forget the context in which it was brought up, but someone mentioned social permaculture. And the topic came up of inclusivity in social permaculture. The topic came up of using the permaculture principle, integrate, don't segregate. And what that means for disability rights and disability inclusion in permaculture and how historically there's not that much space or thought in permaculture design for disability inclusion. And I've been thinking about that a lot, particularly as I have some people in my family with um, disability issues. Uh, just thinking about how 
we want a really integrated functional permaculture system to work and how we need to make space and take time and energy to fully integrate instead of segregate and include in our design how we interact with people with disabilities, how we interact and fold in and incorporate disabled people into permaculture, how we fold in, integrate, value the very young, the elderly. Sorry, I had to dip out there for a second. My 12-year-old needed help with something. So as I was saying, I think if we're looking at really having an integrated system and really having a system where we value and see the connectedness of all things and understand that there really is no person who is a burden, just like there is nothing in a permaculture system that really is a waste, that it's just a resource we need to find a use for. There really needs to be this emphasis, I feel, on inclusivity and valuing the gifts and skills and just the humanity and presence of people with disabilities. So I'm not exactly sure what that looks like. I've just been thinking um, about how a lot of permaculture is intensely physical. Um, In fact, I'm going to come take my chicken bucket and we're going to go out into a different part of the garden so I can talk more about that. But um, a lot of permaculture is intensely physical and a lot of permaculture is based on really neurotypical social interactions. There's a lot of um, interactions online or in permaculture literature, regenerative agriculture groups, regenerative agriculture groups that emphasizes this notion of like really normalizing and going with the, the middle, right? In terms of our social interactions and our social inclusivity. And in permaculture, there's this principle that talks about valuing the margins and working on that edge effect. And I think that's something that when we are looking at social permaculture and applying it to human communities and human interactions, it's really, really important that we remember that valuing the edges and the marginal is a permaculture principle and it is there for a reason. So when we choose to just value a normal range of very heteronormative, white-centered, neurotypical-centered, ableist planning in our permaculture, we exclude a huge percentage of the population. So one of the ways I was thinking about this was like when you start your permaculture system, permaculture can get kind of hyper-focused on gardening. And this is something that um, and it has been discussed in the Permaculture for Beginners Facebook group recently. It's really easy to kind of get fixated on gardening and permaculture is so much more than that. But the reality is that at the core of permaculture is permanent agriculture and it is about growing food in part and that can be intensely physical. So what does that mean? Like let's take for example here, I did a whole bunch of work the last couple days stringing up, tying up, cleaning up, pruning all of my cane fruit on my property to get it ready for fall. And I'm going to have a video about that coming up soon, but um, raspberries here and marionberries, black caps, blackberries, ever-bearing raspberries. I spent hours squatting, cutting, tying, reaching, hauling, doing a lot of really physical labor. What does that mean when we are thinking about people with disabilities and how we include them in permaculture if a lot of the initial work of front loading your system and establishing your system is very intensely physical how can we make sure that we're not ableist in our permaculture and how can we make sure that we are making a space for members in our community who are in the margins and who don't fit the very narrow range down the middle 
And so when we talk about permaculture being a system of regeneration that can be applied to all landscapes, any desertified damaged landscape, permaculture can benefit it. The interaction between humans and that landscape can produce positive effects for both the landscape and the people. And I think because permaculture is something that is a good thing, a sustainable thing, it's wrong to not make it available and accessible for people with disabilities, for non-neurotypical people, for neurodiverse people, for people with learning disabilities. I've noticed one um, person in particular who has watched a number of my videos has made a couple of comments about how much um, they appreciate having permaculture education in a video format because they're not a strong reader. And I think about that, having audiobooks and if you listen to podcasts like the Permaculture Podcast or Green Dreamer, having those other ways for people with learning disabilities, people who might be auditory learners or visual learners, not strong readers, um, to have access to permaculture besides kind of you know permaculture one and two which can be kind of heady um you know wordy thick textbooks to read so i don't know exactly where i'm going with my thoughts but i would love to have more of a conversation think more about how can i as an individual support the people with disabilities in my family and my community and help make permaculture something that is accessible to them and not just accessible but that they are a vital integrated part of permaculture that permaculture is made available to them and that they are valued in the community so when we look at social permaculture thinking about what can we do in terms of diversity and inclusion in terms of valuing the margins and think about how that enriches not only the lives of people who will access permaculture but it also enriches everybody and every plant and every landscape in the system if we can broaden our social permaculture experience and enhance our communities through diversity and also enhance our landscapes and increase our sustainability and regeneration so yeah please share your thoughts about that if you feel like I'm off base or you feel like there's a direction I should be looking or um, have advice, please drop that in the comments. I would, I would love to hear your thoughts because it's something that's really on my mind a lot um, the last few days. So I'm going to go take my dogs for a walk. I hope you all enjoy this last bit of summer here. I'm going to be doing some videos upcoming on fall cleanup and also fall planting. So please turn back, tune back into my channel to learn about what kinds of fall crops I plant and what my fall garden cleanup maintenance care stewardship routine looks like because that's all coming up soon. So be safe and I'll be back. Thanks.